Hi, Mike. Appreciate your time. Uh, kind of an abstract question for you, but uh, a lot of times we talk about this roster that you guys have here as being very deep. When you look at your own roster, even an opposing roster, how do you turn it depth or how do you gauge depth? Just look at a depth chart and say, oh, this guy's on the third line. It must be a really deep team. Or is it much more detailed or nuanced than simply looking at a depth chart? Uh, you were breaking up a little bit, but uh, I think you were just asking about the depth of our team. Uh, that's correct, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that the easiest way is is um, to to look at the types of guys that are say on a on a third line or a fourth line and and think, geez, like they on on some other teams maybe they would be in the top six or or things like that. And so I think that that's where you can really evaluate depth. Um, and and I think we're really fortunate to have um, a lot of guys that. Um, our great hockey players up and down the lineup where, um, you know, if we need to, we can roll four lines and 6D and um, maybe worry a little bit less about matchups and things like that and, and have everybody in the game. So um, I think that that's where, you know, depth really presents itself is uh, for other teams trying to match up against a team with a lot of depth is really difficult because if you're, if you're using your, your shutdown line against, one line in particular, then you're you're leaving um, opportunity for the other lines to take advantage of. So I think that we uh, we definitely have a lot of depth. Mike DeFabo. Hey Mike, uh, this is the first time we're talking to you since you took that puck to the face. Looks like maybe you have a little bit of a shiner there. I was curious, what was uh, what was the damage, and how comfortable do you feel out there with the full cage right now? I imagine you haven't done that a lot since college. Yeah, I feel good. Um, it's uh, it's weird putting that cage back on. Like you said, I haven't haven't worn it since uh, since college. So a bit of an adjustment, but uh, I've been feeling good. Dan Kangerski. Hi, Mike. Uh, th thanks for speaking with us today. I I've seen a lot of work over the last couple of days dealing with the, the four check and trying to avoid that and get the puck up into the neutral zone. Just what sort of specific challenges do the Islanders present for you in this series? Well, they're a great hockey team with a lot of um, a lot of speed, especially on the four check, like you said. And um, you know, I think when you have this much time off between games, you you want to simulate game situations as much as possible and. Um, uh, I think that that's definitely one of the biggest strengths of their team. So um, we're we're trying to do our best to be ready for that as 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 much as you can be. Um, obviously, they're like I said, really good at it. So it's a, it's an area of focus for us. Taylor Haas, Mike, you went six and two against the Islanders in the regular season. Just what do you think were some of the keys that allowed you to be so successful in those meetings in the regular season? Uh, well, I think it's it's important to to look back on those meetings and and kind of like you said, try to learn from them. But but at the end of the day, everybody is starting with no wins and no no losses as the playoffs start. So um, you kind of take it with a grain of salt. Like I think if if you're looking at what we did well, I think we were um, we were hard to play against. Uh, I don't think we gave them a lot of chances and, and especially against them, they're, they're so good at not giving up a lot of chances. So if you, if you get into that type of game where you're, you're just kind of trading rushes back and forth, they're, they're really good at, at shutting you down and then capitalizing on those chances. So I think we were, we were good at staying away from that type of hockey and, um, but like I said, it's, it's a complete, completely new season. Um, and, and we need to, know that they're going to be excited and ready to play and, and we need to to match that intensity. Jenna Harner. Mike, over the weekend, the NHL said that they were going to relax some of the COVID protocols and Coach Sullivan told us that you guys were going to meet that threshold to be able to relax some of those protocols. Just what does this do for you guys mentally? And obviously, I know there's a little bit of a couple weeks buffer here, but how excited are you guys to be able to have, you know, a little sense of normalcy in a year, in a while that hasn't been normal? Uh, well, I think, you know, I, I don't think it's been a huge topic of, of discussion for us. I, I think we're all pretty focused and dialed in on, on hockey right now. And um, I, I feel like, you know, 
when you're going into the playoffs, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience, but even when I was in college and, and junior and, and uh, coming up in the ranks, I, I find that when you get into the playoffs, you kind of really hunker down and, and sacrifice any any sort of um, luxuries to, to make sure that you're doing everything possible to conserve energy and be ready for that next game because they come really quickly. So um, it's it's great that the league has been able to relax some of the protocols to bring life a little bit back to normal. But um, I think at the same time during this this period here, we're, we're going to be totally focused on hockey. So um, I'm not sure how much we'll really take advantage of it. Take two more, Will Graves. Mike, when you guys clinched the playoff berth, you, you know, the day after you spoke about the, the leadership of, of Sid and Gino and just sort of you do, you want to raise your game to get to their level. But I'm sort of curious, off the ice, what did these guys do, especially given the protocols and the limitations you have that you wouldn't normally have, to try to get guys comfortable, to get them feel that they're not just part of just this group when you guys are, you know, suited up and on the ice, but part of an actual team and in the organization? Well, I think the the opportunity to to be on the road together and and be in uh, kind of that team lounge atmosphere that we've had all season has been has been really great. Um, it, you know, in in past seasons when you're when you're going out to dinner on the road and things like that, um, oftentimes it's in smaller groups, and then of course we we get together for team meals and and things like that throughout the season. But for the most part, it's it's kind of separated into to smaller groups um whereas you know through the whole season every night we were all ordering food to to the hotel because that was our our only means of, of getting some food in us and and hanging out and talking and you know playing games together and and all that type of stuff it was kind of like minor hockey where you, where you spend the the whole tournament just hanging out in the hotel with your teammates and i think that that was a, a great opportunity to to get to know each other even more so than, than maybe we would have in a regular season. Last question, Mike DeFabo. Hey Mike, uh, not to bring up a bad memory, but I'm sure it wasn't the best experience last year when you were healthy scratch in the postseason. Just how do you feel like you're in a different place right now as a player going into this postseason as opposed to last year? Well, I think my my confidence level is, is uh, just at a, a, a new, new level compared to last year um you know it's it, it was a tough year and and i put all of that on on my shoulders obviously I, I didn't deliver and i didn't play up to my potential um and and i only have myself to blame for that and so i think that that's um that's where my head was at going into the off season and and my my only focus was making sure that i came ready to play this year and so throughout this season you know my my focus was to just build my game up and and step by step get back to to the level that i i wanted to be at and uh, i feel like i'm getting there I, I think i still have a lot to work on just like any other player but uh, i think my confidence level um is is in a lot better place where uh, i'm less worried about making mistakes and you know that's that's the hardest thing to do is is if you're thinking about making mistakes and worried about making mistakes so it's already you're gonna you're gonna make a lot of them because that's what you're thinking about and so um i i think being able to be in a better place mentally where during games i'm i'm reading and reacting and um making plays and and being a little more sure of myself is is a great place to be in. And uh, I mean, I'm super excited to be able to get into the playoffs here. And uh, as much as um, the plans were were playoff hockey, and in a sense, they they weren't the real playoffs. And so it's been a long time. It's been five five years, I guess, since I've played in a in a playoff hockey game. And uh, I'm I'm pumped to be back at home.